This video is about uh, not wasting opportunities. So usually the mindset of, of people is with recovery, it's, you know, I gotta do the work and I gotta distract. I gotta avoid things that are uncomfortable because, you know, when I do this work, it's gonna give me relief and I'm gonna feel better. And you know, I was doing the, you know, I was doing some methods here and there, you know, it felt good for a week and then it came back. I don't know if this is working, oh my God. So usually what people think is that with recovery, you know, you're gonna get relief uh, when you're doing the work and things are gonna get easier and you're gonna have the good days. But actually what you need to do is you need to run that old program and let it, let it burn itself out by, by letting it. Right by sitting in, in the fear, right, sitting in the danger, and then sending the messages of safety during it, so that you engage and it changes to a new program. So, when you're doing that, when you're when you're uh, allowing yourself to be in the danger, you're gonna feel like shit. And what we want to do is we want we want you to know that you need to feel like shit as much as possible right? When you have symptoms come up, feelings, thoughts, think of them as opportunities. Don't waste them. Don't go, oh no, I'm triggered. But I was triggered though. Yeah, this doing this, I actually feel like I'm getting worse. And I feel like I'm, you know, but I, but it's triggering. Yes. So every time you're going to say that something is triggering, know that that's what we want. Yeah, but I had these feelings and yabba dabba doos and yeah, but I'm feeling, but yeah, but I'm feeling. That's what we want. Okay, okay, I know what you mean. Yeah, but it's like, I feel worse than I've ever felt. That's what we want. Oh, can you stop doing that? Can you stop saying that's what we want? Yeah, but that's what we want. I don't get it. This is so confusing. Aren't we supposed to feel better? Yes, but you have to open that door. Right, because what people are doing is they're leaving that door closed. They're feeling that it's hot, right? Oh, uh, on the other side of there, there's a lot of alarms and there's a lot of ligers behind there. There's a lot of fires, there's a lot of danger. There's hell behind that door. But I want that hell to go away. So I'm doing the methods and we know where the hell it's right there and I don't like it. But what I'm telling you is you gotta open that door. You got to go towards that hell. You got to go towards that feeling. You got to feel, you got to go and have an exorcism over and over and over again. You got to get triggered. You got to feel uncomfortable. You got to have the symptoms scare the shit out of you. You got to have the fear. You got to sit in the fear and allow it to be there. Allow it to run wild. And it's all about your response. Don't white knuckle through it. Don't survive through it. Right? That's the response we want to look for opportunities not to do this, right? You'd be like, oh, fuck, I fucked it up. I, I survived through that opportunity. Shit, there'll be more opportunities now since you did that. You all, Don't worry, you're gonna have tons of opportunities. Okay, so the next opportunity you have, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna pounce on it, right. But I feel so horrible, you don't understand. It, I feel like shit right now, and people get wrapped up in how they feel, and how horrible, and how am I, but, it, but I felt like this. I really felt like shit. So I couldn't, you know, yeah, but I was feeling like, like I get it. You're always going to feel that intense. It's always going to feel intense. It's always going to feel very urgent because the brain is, it's got a sense of urgency because it needs you to pay attention to these alarms. It needs you to either fight or flee. So do you think an alarm system is going to be like, oh, yeah, okay. Oh, you're doing something? Oh, no problem. You're, you're, yeah, I'm on the phone. Just hold on a sec. Okay. So anyway, Ralph, I was thinking that maybe on Tuesday we... Oh, oh, just hold on. Can you fuck off for a second? I'm on the phone. Okay. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, okay. If you had an alarm system that was such a bitch, you would be dead. Right? You, Your alarm system isn't like that. It's not going to wait for you or show you daffodils and kittens. What it's going to do is going to show you, bait you, and show you the things that are uncomfortable in your body, physically in your brain, it's gonna feel like you have relentless OCD looping thoughts of nightmares. You're gonna feel like you're in a constant exorcism physically, right? 
I can't put my eyes back in my head. I wish you could. That would be an awesome effect. Yeah, but how am I, you know, it's, it feels so real. It feels like, you know, like, oh my God, I have this weird thing on my face. If does it, what does that mean? Does that mean dot, dot, dot? Oh my God. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, I, I was so triggered. And I feel, it feels so real. It feels so hard. I thought I was going to die. And yes, I know you're going to feel like shit a lot, constantly. That's what I mean. That's why I try to tell people, get used to the idea that you're going to feel like shit over and over again. And when you have those weeks where, or days that, where you might get a peak of feeling normal, you don't want those days because the work isn't being done. That's where you're on vacation, right? You want to have the days that are constantly feeling like shit. And once in the blue moon, you might feel good. You get a little peak, but you get back. You got to get back to the work, right? The only way to feel good in the long run is to open that door because you got to expose yourself to the fear. And that fear comes in symptoms, thoughts, feelings, OCD looping thoughts, triggers, PTSD, and you name it, physical symptoms, right? When you open the door, that's what you have to deal with. So if you want to run the old program in order to transition to a new program, you're going to have to feel like shit. I'm sorry, there's no other way. You can't go around it. You got to go through it. You got to open that door. And you got to feel what's coming through there, right? You got to process that and engage in life. Yeah, I left this water bottle in my truck last night. Actually, I got a 2-4 in the back. They're all frozen. What do you do with these opportunities? Well, use the buzzwords. You pounce on them. What would you normally do with these opportunities? Right? You don't think of them as opportunities normally, right? You think of them as, get the fuck away from me. Oh, my God, I hate this. Oh, my God. I need this to go away. Oh, my God, I'm scared. I f oh, my God, I feel, I feel, I feel right? Instead, do something different. Use these as opportunities. Use that language, right? Call them that. Call them opportunities because it remind, gives you a reminder to the brain that, oh, if it's an opportunity, what do I do with that opportunity? Well, with an opportunity, you pounce on it. You eat it. You consume it. You go, oh, that's mine. All mine. You're not having any. That's mine, right? So the buzzwords, pounce, go against the grain. Going against the grain usually means do the opposite of what you usually do. And what we usually do is run away, freak out, catastrophize, survive, white knuckle, right? So go against the grain means, ah, give me more. Oh, lean into it. Oh, yeah, well, give me some more of that pain on my left shoulder. Oh, you know what? I'm going to, this is my left. Okay, my left. But right, left, right, yeah. Give me some more. Ah, uh, yeah. Get right in there. Yes. Right? You go against the grain. You pounce on it. You ask for more. You call it on and go, uh, yeah, I know you're telling me we go to the hospital and at this time it's real, but uh, I th I'm going to call bullshit and I'm gonna, I want to see if that's going to happen. Let's see what happens. Come on, bring it on, buddy. You're not going to do it. It's not going to happen. Right? Get cocky confidence in there. Throw it in their face. Go, let's see what happens. Nothing's going to happen. I fucking dare you. To make that happen. I fucking dare you to have my gut explode. Right? I want my heart to explode. I want my fucking gallbladder to explode. And I want whatever what if thought symptom to explode. And then I want to bleed out and I want to fucking die. Let's see it happen. Let's do it. Let's do it right now. No, we're not gonna go to the hospital. You know what? I'd rather die right now than go to the fucking hospital. Bring it on, buddy. The brain sees the confidence in there, the cocky confidence, and when somebody has confidence, that shows safety. That shows that there's nothing wrong, right? And the brain goes, okay, he's being a little cocky now, right now. He's being a little bit of a dick, you know, but you know what? I'm not here to judge how, you know, much of a dick he is. I'm here to judge on the factor of him being in danger or not. And that tells me he's not in danger. So we're going to turn that alarm. You know, we'll keep it on for a little bit because he's a dick. Okay, we'll turn it off because he's cocky and confident. And he keeps showing me that he's safe by the way he's responding to me. Helmet, this is interesting. You know, good work. Thank you for telling me that these alarms shouldn't be on. They're false alarms. And you're giving me the true responses that you're safe. You're not freaking out. You're not running down the hallway. You're not avoiding. You're not distracting. Because that tells me you're in danger, buddy. And you're taking these as opportunities. That tells me you're safe. Right? And when you're just telling me that you felt good last week, that means that there's danger nearby. So we're going to keep those alarms on.
So thank you for telling me that, right? Thanks for looking forward to only the good days because that tells me that I was right to put those alarms on. Thank you. See how that works? So you don't want to have the good days. You need to feel like shit as much as possible because the, the reason is it's training. Feeling like shit with your symptoms and sitting in your fear over and over and over again, opening that door over and over again, you know, taking the hinges off the door and throwing that fucking door off so it's constantly open going, you know, we don't need a door. Fuck it. Fuck it. You know what? I'm going to tear down these walls too. You're just going to hang out here. Come whenever you want, buddy. You don't have to knock on the door. You come whenever you want, right? Which, which shows confidence. And again, the reason is that we want the, the days where you feel like shit as much as possible. The reason why we want you to feel like shit as much as possible because it's training. It's exposure. You're getting used to the symptoms. I want you to swim in the symptoms. I want the symptoms to be your buddy. I want you to wear them as a bodysuit, right? I want you to have the symptoms go like, buddy, you think this is a little too much? Dude, like, I understand. Like, you're being a little bit, like, creepy and, like... Oh my god. Like I want you to hug your symptoms and be like a clingy crazy fucking, you know, fatal attraction girlfriend freak with your symptoms. So much that you get so used to them that you become indifferent to them. Right? When you're holding your symptoms like this all the time, you're going, "Hey buddy, I don't know, we're going to hang out. Let's go watch a t Let's watch a sh let's watch a movie together." Yeah, buddy. Eh. Eh. When you, this is training. What we're doing is we're exposing yourself to the things that are horrifying and uncomfortable until it gets to the point where you feel nothing. Right? You feel no feelings toward that symptom. It's there constantly. It's like furniture. It's like that painting on the wall. We want you to train on the symptoms as much as possible until you change the association of that that symptom from fear fuck to oh you hey where are you going no you're coming back buddy don't come back astritis come back nausea nausea what the fuck man i thought you were you and me were fucking down i can understand gastritis leaving but fuck no you and me are fucking like tight tight like a toyga come on nausea come back yeah okay come back out of boy come back ocd looping thoughts Buddy, I was just joking, man. I was kidding. No, you're huge, buddy. You're huge. No, no, no. Come, come back. Right? You want to get so comfortable with these things so that you become indifferent to them. So they become like a painting on the wall. Because when you do that, the alarms go from a 10 to a 5 to a 3 to a 2 to a 1 to a 0. The brain won't perceive those things as dangerous anymore. They don't... You won't... You won't have that inner battle of fear anymore about these symptoms. And that gives the, the brain an opportunity to bring that baseline down. It's one less form of resistance and, and fight and fear, right? We're, we're ex extinguishing fires, right? When you got that angry survival fire burning inside you, well, that brings more alarms. We want to calm that fire to... <sighs> Because then the flames die out. And when you're indifferent to something that's dangerous and there's no flame, this allows the brain to turn that alarm off, bring the baseline down. And those symptoms, they fuck off. Poof, 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 gone. You see how we go through the back side door? Is anybody? Oh, the party's out, out in the front. Fuck it, I'm going to go through the back. I'm gonna grab. I'm gonna grab a beer from the fridge. And I'm just gonna pretend like I'm, you know, I was in the kitchen. And hey, buddy, hey, how's it going? Do you know where the cheese is? I think it's in the fridge. Cool. Do you know where the shitter is? I gotta take a mean one. Oh, it's over there. I just saw it. It's over there. Thanks, man. Awesome, buddy. Cool. Okay, I'll see you later. Okay, cool. All right, I'm at the party. Right. Everybody's having fun. We're having fun. I went to the back door. Nice. You know, I didn't. I didn't stir the pot too much. I didn't ruffle any feathers. Right. You, you kind of go with the flow, right? We don't want to crash against the tides. We don't want to have resistance, right? You want to be a cork in water, right? A cork in water. So that's why you want to 
have the shitty days as much as possible because I want to change the association from ah to ah. And when you do that, alarms get turned off, symptoms go away, and that's how you heal. And that's how you recover. Do you kind of see how that works? Kind of get it? And that's why I say don't waste opportunities. In the beginning, it's hard because you're you're going towards danger. That's fucking hard to do. But the more you do it, the more you're going to get better at it. And in the beginning, you won't feel any relief by doing this. It'll just be a, a paradox shift that you do, right? So you're going to feel like you have to go to the hospital because your brain is telling you something's malfunctioning in your body or in your or, or what if thought or whatever it is. Instead, invite it in, allow it, ask for more, and then, oh, opportunity. How much said, don't waste that button in this. Okay, what are you gonna do? We don't wanna waste this. Well, doing this is good. Doing nothing. Doing nothing is good enough because you're not giving it a response that reaffirms danger, so that's good. Already you're winning by doing nothing. By allowing the fear to be there and just going, ah. <laughs> well, that stings, right? And then you can bring it up another notch. You can pounce on it. Go, yeah, you know what? I'm going to sit in 1,000% trust and I'm going to jump to that reality, like quantum leaping, like quantum jumping. And I'm going to sit in the reality and go, I'm going to call your bluff, motherfucker. Let's do this. Come on, buddy. Are you saying we got to go to the hospital? I'm pouncing on this opportunity and I'm going to sit in 1000% trust. All right. And I'm going to give you nothing. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Come on. Let's see what happens. Nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. A day goes by. Two days goes by. You're going, see, nothing's going to happen. Nothing, nothing's happening. And then boom, nothing happened. Okay. Then it sends you the alarm again. Do that again. Pounce. Ask for more. Sit in that 1000% trust and sitting in that trust right? Sitting in that trust is not going to feel, you're not going to get relief. All you're doing is you're just changing your response. And the more you do it over and over again, eventually you're going to get good at it. It's going to be like second nature. And you're going to see patterns with experience, right? Sometimes you just got to experience these scary symptoms over and over and over again until you're used to them because you know they always pass. Things always pass, but they do come back. But the, when it does come back the 15th time, You've experienced it already. And it's like, meh, I'm fine with that. You know what? I want you to come back tomorrow. And I want you to come back uh, in February and in May. And you better show up. I'm going to be pissed off. Because it's all about going from ah to meh. And the first few times, uh, the way I did it is while it was happening, I remembered, okay, opportunity, go against the grain. You know, let's jump that into that reality with 1000% trust. So I would, right? And this, this was hell. I'm going through my worst hell, like every one of them, right? They're equally hellish and they will equally be hellish in the future, but I'm gonna try a different response. I'm gonna take the opportunity, right? This is my opportunity to sit in the fear and go, well, we're fine. And after you did that, I want you to celebrate because you were aware and you changed your response. So that deserves a celebration. And I want you to, to celebrate every fucking time you do that after. Because every time you, you celebrate, you're putting in your mind, you're learning to catch more opportunities. And it's going to start to shift with repetition. And eventually, you're going to start to turn off alarms quicker. Right? When you sit in that 1,000% trust with going against the grain, seeing the opportunities, don't waste the opportunities, pouncing, right? You're going to come to a point where something's happening and you're going to pounce and you're going to eat it and consume it and go, that's all mine, mine, fuck off, mine. Yeah. Cocky confidence. Yeah. And you did it. You're like, fucking right. I did it. I fucking did it. it. You will actually feel relief. The brain will go, okay, yeah, yeah, that's fine. We'll turn the alarm off for now. We're going to turn it on again tomorrow, but for now we're going to turn it off. I trust them for now. I'm going, to, I'm going to test them out, see how it works, right? You will get relief. In the beginning, there's no relief. But you get to the point where you will get relief. You know, the alarm goes on and off. It's like a strobe light. <laughs> no, 
know there is a, a learning curve to this. In the beginning, you won't see a difference. There's no relief. But keep doing that and be happy and celebrate every time you caught the opportunity and you did something about it. You went against the grain. You went. You got all uh, cocky confidence with it. You asked for more. You know, you pounced on it. You consumed it. You ate it. You celebrated. And eventually, when you keep doing that, you start to learn things like it's the back of your hand, right? It becomes second nature. And then you will get to a point where you will get relief. And then you get to the point where you don't care if you get relief or not. You push, you keep pushing that mindset and then it lifts and it goes away because all your alarms have turned off because the brain finally trusts you. 